Vladimir Trechikov, who was born in 1913 and died in 2006. Although so much a part of the fabric of South African cultural life, at the height of his acclaim, Vladimir Trechikov was actually born in Siberia, and that was in 1913. But following the Russian Revolution, which was in 1917, his parents fled with their eight children to Harbin in China, where there was a large Russian expat community. After leaving school, Trechi worked in advertising and publishing industries as an art director, an illustrator, and a cartoonist, and this was both in Shanghai and later in Singapore. He was imprisoned in Java and Jakarta during World War II, and then in 1946, he was finally reunited in South Africa with his wife Natalie and daughter Mimi, who had been evacuated to Cape Town during the war. No artist has ever been more divisive in South African art history than Trechi, as he's affectionately known by his large legion of fans, or else known as the People's Painter. He was one of the most popular and financially successful artists in the world during his heyday, and that was from the period of about 1950 to the mid-1970s, when crowds of visitors thronged to his department store exhibitions, which were held in Durban, Cape Town, even London and San Francisco, and signed prints of his work sold in their hundreds of thousands. There were reproductions of the green-faced Chinese girl, the weeping rose with its impossibly three-dimensional drops of water, and of course the dying swan with her quantities of downy feathers which hung in suburban sitting rooms and bedrooms, oddly enough even bathrooms, from Boxburg to Birmingham and San Jose to Sydney. Yet the highbrow of the art world, Conoscenti, consistently derided his output as sentimental, even vulgar, and worst of all, commercial. From the start, this even prevented him from holding his first solo exhibition in the country at the prestigious Association of Arts Gallery in Cape Town in 1948, although he was a member of the organization. In her survey of the 20th century art in South Africa, Esme Berman doesn't afford him the honor of his own biographical listing. Instead, she relegates Trechi to a half a paragraph in the popular art entry, with popular having negative connotations, since in her opinion, that kind of art appeals only to those who lack aesthetic discrimination. But then, as tastes changed, Trechi's superstar status faded, and in the 1980s, the prints of works like The Lost Orchid and the very familiar Balinese Girl ended up on car boot sales and in second-hand charity shops. But after an about turn in the 1990s, when according to the artist's biographer, Boris Gorlick, it became hip to be naff, and Trechi's reputation enjoyed a resurgence on a wave of ironical retro chic. Now his images are ubiquitous in consumer culture and once again appearing on the walls of trendy cocktail bars, funky nightclubs, the world over, and in contemporary music videos on album covers, mouse pads, scatter cushions, and even on the current fad for textile COVID masks. Miss Wong pops up in the background of a scene in Guy Ritchie's movie, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, and it doesn't get much cooler than that. Most people have only ever seen the artist's works in prints, so for Strauss and Company to have five paintings in the current auction sale of some of his most characteristic themes is a rare treat. And to view the glorious colours and masterful technique up close and personal is a special moment to savour.